It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Ever since Gamergate started way back when, it seemed as though that most people nowadays are blaming that hashtag for all the wrongdoings in the world. Whether it's like the alt-right or something that's like really terrific or whatever, it's always the fault of Gamergate because reasons. Now this story again is related to Gamergate because Brianna Wu, one of the prominent members of the anti-Gamergate movement, had decided to make a TV show based upon Gamergate because reasons. Fictional Gamergate series in the works from Mind Riot Entertainment and game developer Brianna Wu. Mind Riot Entertainment will work with journalist, game developer, and game programmer Brianna Wu for Gamergate, a series about her experience as a critic and target of the notorious 2014 online harassment campaign. The 2014 Gamergate online campaign ignited a firestorm for its targeting of women in the video game industry, which landed the foundation for current issues of disinformation and hate. Before QAnon, COVID-19 conspiracies, and the January 6th erection, there was Gamergate, who was among the targeted women, which also included Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian. Already this whole entire article is just flat out lying. Mostly because back in 2014, when this whole entire Gamergate controversy was happening, there was a hashtag called Not Your Shield, and basically Not Your Shield was a hashtag that consists of minority and women who supported the whole entire Gamergate, you know, campaign, which is to fight against, like, misinformation about journalism. And so, we know for a fact that there were also women who were supporting this whole entire Gamergate thing back then. Not just that, though, but there was actually a report that was done by the FBI, which also states that Gamergate is pretty much innocent. The FBI has posted a highly redacted report of a stress investigation through the Gamergate controversy in 2014 and 2015. The 173 page document, not including 61 deleted pages, primarily seems to cover harassment against critic Aenea Sarkeesian and developer Brianna Wu, including a shooting threat that caused Sarkeesian to cancel a planned talk at Utah State University. Ultimately, the investigation peered out the FBI wasn't able to identify the people behind some of the threats apparently declined to persecute others and appealed to have struggled with judicial issues. A substantial portion, for example, is devoted to a handful of threats regarding the Utah State University talk, a mix of apparently totally serious messages and a joking one referring internet memes. Another section clearly refers to an incident involving a YouTube personality named Jay Carners who made over-the-top stress against Brianna Wu before unveiling himself as a comedian named Jane Vorvosky. In at least two cases, law enforcement interviewed people who were admitted to spreading threatening emails or phone calls, but seemed to have left them off with a warning. One was in juvenile in Indiana and harassed a person who was likely Wu. He admitted that he was one in the making the redacted. He told me that he was probably called her at least 40, 50 times with stress. He sometimes just harassed her and tries to get on her nerves. He explained that he gets online to a chat group and she suddenly gets upset with them for what they're talking about. They recognize that she is upset and they try to harass her to make her even more upset. The chat group asked Redacted to call her and threatened her according to Redacted. Redacted told me that she had never made any bomb threats, but he doesn't doubt that someone else in the chat group has done so. This report was released as part of the Freedom of Information Act requested last year, although at that point it was difficult to verify whether the recipients have modified its contents. Since Gamergate was never a organized movement, none of the people mentioned in the report are members of it, and some instances predate the controversy, like the bomb threat against Arnia Sarkeesian at the 2014 
Game Developer Conference. As you guys can see, according to the FBI, a lot of the death stress, a lot of the nasty calls that people like Brianna Wu, as well as Anita Sarkeesian had to face, did not in fact come from people who are verified gamer gators. They were random people who probably did it even predating Gamergate during that whole entire time period. And so this whole entire idea that Gamergate was like some sort of big massive harassment campaign is an outright lie according to the FBI itself. And not just that though, but people like Brianna Wu were actually caught faking their own harassment by making their own fake account to harass themselves. And so I don't necessarily trust people like her to make some sort of objective TV show based entirely off of Gamergate. Now what was so funny about all of this, because they mentioned about Brianna Wu and also Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, was that Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian actually went to this whole entire meeting against harassment against women at the freaking United Nations. Now the United Nations made some sort of report about harassment against women in video games. And I shit you not, one of the main citations that they used was literally a empty hard drive as a citation for that report. And so, this whole entire, you know, thing about talking about Gamergate right now, I'm actually getting some sort of, you know, flashbacks about all of this, that what was actually going on back then. The series will explore the origins of the widespread intimidation campaign from the perspective of multiple fictional people in the gaming industry, from executives to journalists and indie developers. It's so interesting that they stated in this article that they want the different perspectives of different people within the gaming industry yet at the same time fail to recognize that one of the main events that of course started Gamergate to begin with was because of this whole entire question about you know the developers and the reviewers because allegedly allegedly that apparently Zoe Quinn went out and, you know cheated on her boyfriend and slept with five guys. That's why people say five guys and fries for that whole entire time period because apparently she slept with five guys, have sex with them apparently, allegedly, and naturally the boyfriend, the ex-boyfriend, made this whole entire publication about all of this. And so people were like really upset, of course, like it's, you know, it shows like, you know, that all the stuff that the game developers and the reviewers are doing right now was against the whole entire idea of journalism and ethics, right? And so, many outlets outright stated that all the gamers are dead, blah 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 blah. And of course, the whole entire hashtag was coined during that time period. And so, it's just so weird how one of the main principles of Gamergate was because of corruption in gaming journalism. Yet for some reason, of course, if you were like a developer back then and want to have some sort of, you know, favorable reviews, I guess you just could screw guys and get favorable reviews, but oh well. About the Gamergate TV show. Do you believe stories can change the world? I do. And I think most of us who got into creative fields think so too. A question a lot of people in the United States are asking ourselves is how the hell our country get here? When I watch Twitch, I often see women streamers too young to experience Gamergate casually mention the death stress, the swatting, and the doxing that they are being a woman online in 2021. While it's true that people do in fact experience this type of horrific harassment, I hate it that people like her only frame harassment as only a issue that just affects the women. Because look, men can also experience those type of things. Why is it that every single time this type of issue is talked about, it's only focused on one gender and one gender alone? Because harassment is not necessarily a man's issue, a woman's issue, or XYZ issue. Harassment is basically a human issue. Not just that though, it's kind of funny that Brianna Wu, Anita Sarkeesian, and Zoe Quinn always go on and on and on about harassment, but underneath their definition of harassment, as they said out loud 
at the United Nation that any type of video criticism of them counts as harassment. So me making this whole entire video according to their definition is proof of harassment. So I'm sorry, but um, I don't really trust people like Brianna Will for definitions of harassment. The Christchurch massacre was horrific and it's directly linked to HN. HN directly held to QAnon Anti-vaxxers strive because the disinformation policies I and other beg Facebook to implement were ignored. Actually, this whole entire Christchurch shooter was actually a lone wolf. He had no sort of, you know, affiliation to anything. And matter of fact, in this whole entire document, he stated, like, out loud, that stuff like Spiral the Dragon was also inspirations of his whole entire shooting. Which, of course, it was like, you know, some sort of trolling thing he said out loud. He also mentioned in this whole entire document that he wanted to pit the left and the right together after what he had done with this whole entire beans he just did. And so you're actually doing what the whole entire shooter wanted, which is to pit people against us versus them. Now, this whole entire disinformation campaign about, you know, the anti-vax stuff, while the whole entire definition of being an anti-vaxxer has changed to which if you don't want to have some sort of mandate against like the vaccine, then you're somehow like, like you know, an anti-vaxxer according to Webster now. Now, why do you like the discussion of like the vaccine or not on social media like, you know, Facebook or Twitter or whatnot? I think it's important to say that they also have a right to, you know, have these sort of discussions out loud on a public forum. When people had debates in the past, they used to go to parks or whatever to have some sort of, you know, public discussion and chatter about, you know, complex issues. And the digital component of that whole entire thing is actually, you know, those websites that I just mentioned that now. And so I don't think for a single second that people should be silenced just because they have their own personal opposing view against the vaccine. I also think, of course, that it's very dangerous that the United States government want to shut down discussion over the vaccine on Facebook and is actually working hard with Facebook to shut people down. So no, just like the solitary, you know, United Nations speech about criticism of people's harassment, I don't think talking about vaccines should be, of course, silenced at all. And then you have monsters like Steve Barron who took the Gamergate playbook and weaponized it against our country to get Trump election. Today, he and others like him are letting the ground roll for the next interaction against the United States using the same playbook. Most Gamergaters back then were not even right wingers or Trump supporters. As a matter of fact, if you look at the data back then, back in 2014, 2015, when Paul about their political views in the whole entire world, it shows out that most Gamergators were in fact on the left. So I don't buy for a single second that most Gamergators want to get Trump elections because reasons. Judging from this whole entire statement that Brianna Wu just stated, I'm pretty sure this whole entire TV show for Gamergate is just going to be humongous cringe. And so I honestly cannot wait to see it just to see how bad it is because during this whole entire Gamergate controversy, there was like this sort of CSI episode with Gamergate and it was also really terrible too. So I cannot wait to see more cringe in the future. So what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I will trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.